Hi there everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. And I'm gonna take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for March 14th through the 20th. And it is our last week of winter um, on the calendar anyway, in the Northern Hemisphere and summer down in the summer hemisphere, in the Southern Hemisphere. So right at the end here, and there's a few things I wanna talk about this week. Um, we've got a full moon at 28 degrees Virgo, um, giving us a really good chance to get down to details and changing things. Um, and now Venus is gonna activate the Uranus Saturn square starting this week and a couple other things too. Um, and just right up front here, just like last week, um, I know some of you don't get to the end. My contact, for any reason to contact me, my email is m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com. So if you need to get a reading or need to get in contact with me for any other reason, that's the best way. And remember, Astrological Winds Channel is on Instagram now. So um, look it up on Instagram and become a follower. <clears throat> I just sometimes put in extra things each week on certain days. Um, so just little blurbs here and there. So I'm telling you all at the beginning of this right now so that you can uh, get that up. And remember, I'm also available on Facebook and all kinds of other podcast to on Facebook, you have to look me up, Matthew Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N, and become a friend first. And then I'm on all kinds of podcasts. So it um, gets um, spread out through Buzz Sprout through about, uh, you know, at least 20 different podcasts. Once again, go to your favorite podcast and just look up Astrological Logical Winds channel. If it's not on that one, it's on another. Reveal has it, Apple, Spotify. So you can look on that. And those are all ways you can get me too because there's comment sections. And then, like I said, on YouTube every week. Um, if you uh, are have a YouTube account, just become a follower and put on the notifications. Okay, so this week um, starts pretty mellow. The beginning of the week, there's not a lot of planetary exact aspects going on. And, um, but then it starts to pick up the last four days of the week. So <clears throat> on Thursday, uh, Mercury will sextile Uranus. So this is an interesting one because um, a lot, usually it gives a lot of like great ideas, basically. A lot of like information is coming into you from different sources. So it may be through other people. It, it may be through information you get exposed to somehow. It may be through your own intuition, picking up on ideas and stuff. And what it does is it usually creates opportunities to like use some of these ideas to make changes. Um, our minds are like more flexible and willing to change. Like if, you know, um, Uranus is all about bringing in change, but this is on like an exciting level. This is on the level of wanting to bring that change in. And of course, since it's a sextile, you have to act on it, you know, so the wanting really does have to be there. It's interesting, Mercury is in Pisces, you know, not strong there, but rich with imagination, um, rich with inspiration. So like, you know, we, we're probably gonna get some kind of more holistic, intuitive ideas through this one. Maybe, you know, not as intellectual as those two, which those are the two planets of the mind. Mercury is the lower mind and Uranus is the higher mind. So when they get together in a harmonious aspect like this, you know, the intuitive insights are working really well. And we can even like, you know, even old problems that we may have, old issues that we may have, like we can find new approaches to working with them, um, see new ways of doing things. So it's, um, so it's exciting on that level. It just um, really gives a lot of, um, you know, new exposure to things and brings an excitement to the mind and to our life about wanting to bring in change and allowing our 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 um, our um, 
systems to be upgraded, so to speak. Um, and then is the big day is Friday. Friday is when the full moon is at 28 degrees Virgo. So once again, we have another full or new moon that's in a critical degree. We've been getting them a lot this year. And that just means we're already like, you know, there's a, there's a, there's what I would call like a graduation going on. Like, you know, that we've learned a lot about these archetypes of the Zodiac. Um, and it's time for a lot of us to like, you know, step it up to another level to, you know, like evolutionize that Zodiac into like this changing age of Aquarius that we're going into. So once again, at 28 degrees Virgo, so it's a full moon, you know, and so, you know, look where 28 degrees Virgo is in your chart. And that will tell you the house the you know, and, and the axis, because it's a full moon, it's opposite the sun. So the sun's in Pisces. So the opposite house, those are the two houses that'll be most affected in your life by this full moon. And, you know, full moon in Virgo, I mean, <clears throat> Virgo wants to perfect the system. It wants to get things right. It wants to have a procedure, a, a book of rules about how things should be done and and make sure that they're done correctly so really gets into the details of things and can get into like you know a critical judgmental mind which you know can be used in you know positive or negative ways you know depending on how far you take that you know and of course when, when you get into the critical mind, it's both best to use it in a constructive way, especially if, you know, the criticism is directed towards others or something. If you want, you know, your ideas to land, then you need to, like, bring it in a way that it's presented to someone that they're not going to be blocking it right away. And, and so like, you know, the constructive criticism part of Virgo can be very useful because it's like, you know, it's going to take this Piscean, you know, ideas of the Piscean sun, which is just conjunct Neptune. If you remember this past Sunday, it's going to take a lot of that inspiration. There's a lot of Piscean energy last week. And I talked about that in last week's blog. So it was a week to really, like I said, envision things and, and, and get things to a point where, you know, where do I want to move on now? This Virgo full moon's like, okay, now I've got that and I have the tools. So like, I need to use the critical judgmental mind to start to, you know, take care of all the details that I need to take care of for my vision to move forward. So, and, and the other way that's a positive way to use that energy is on yourself, you know, rather than um, criticizing others or situations is kind of looking more at, you know, what your part in that is and using that self-criticism, you know, to once again, tighten the shit. You know, like get your methods down. So Virgo's all about, you know, finding the correct procedure or method. And it's all about using our hands and our mind with tools in between them to perfect the job, to, to, um, to um, become a craftsman at whatever you're doing. That, that you're trying to change. And, you know, it is mutable science, so it's, it's flexible. It, it, it is willing to make these changes. And Virgo's all about wanting to serve others, too. So, like, you know, is willing to put that energy out. But it's like, it really wants to take, it's telling that, you know, it's under the light of this full moon in the Virgo, it's exposing to Pisces, hey, you know, here's where, you know, the grand vision that you have abstractly can't, has to connect well into the real world if it's going to be successful. You know, Virgo's an earth sign, so it's like you want to take that stuff from Pisces and ground it into the real world with Virgo. And, and like I said, with the mind, with with the hands, with tools, it's a very acute 
minded side. So, and, and, and to help even more in this one, the, the aspect that the full moon is making is a trine to Pluto, which means the sun is sextiling Pluto. And here, you know, what that means is there's really a willingness right now, a desire for people to want to change. They want to um, take on the tougher issues. They're willing to look inside themselves. They're willing to um, get into like even like emotionally intense or passionate situations with others and to, um, you know, really like um, get things out and up into the consciousness and start working on changing things, like wanting to take whatever you see in that Virgo full moon and that vision and really having the drive and energy to make that transformation. So the Pluto is gonna like, there's gonna be a lot of like shared experiences that give us the opportunity to grow, to move forward on our path, um, to, to become more self-empowered, um, to become more freed of things from the subconscious that directed our energies prior to this. Um, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of ability in this full moon, and especially at that critical degree, to really up your game and to really, you know, um, take it to a high level. Now, on a negative level, you know, the, the bad thing about, you know, the Virgo thing can be about getting so, you know, critical of others and in that judgmental mind that you create, like, you know, a negative feedback loop of, like, you know, criticism and judgment and stuff. So, like, you know, Virgo really, you know, does have a lot of, like, desire to serve others and connect with others that have similar um, behaviors. So, so you know, but where it can get itself a little bit in trouble is being like a little bit too stuck on procedure and when it's not being followed correctly, fall into this quick negative judgmental mind so so very interesting energy going on with that and and you know mercury is the ruler of this full moon and i just talked about what mercury is doing this week it's in a sextile with uranus so to me that's very very helpful on that level and interesting you know that mercury is in pisces like the sun so like can like jive with that part of it and the Uranus part is like kind of locking in more with the sun, with the moon in Virgo, where it's like, okay, let's take ideas, do make some changes to systems. Let's like, you know, get it better. Let's like improve these things. So, you know, I think the, the sextile, the Uranus is actually, and Mercury ruling the um, full moon is actually gonna be helpful for us to once again want to make these changes that we feel that we are intuiting or being brought to us or shown to us or coming up from the deep subconscious or emotions via the Pluto trine. And it's gonna give us that desire to really wanna make changes. And interesting enough too is that on that day, Venus is sextiling Chiron too. And that's kind of interesting too, because it shows that like, there's like a helpfulness between people, like relationships can have a big part of bringing that energy in and that it actually can, you know, be like um, a learning experience for the people in the relationships and, um, and like really can help heal you know, um, even certain relationships, so, uh, or bring them to another level where they're, they, it's very supportive in other words. And, and, you know, and that even fits in a little bit with the Pisces side of the equation of having, you know, sensitivity towards others and your environment and responding to that in, you know, in, 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 um, ways that help 
each other out. So very interesting energy in this full moon. I, I really think it's a very positive one as long as we don't fall into the trap of a lot of like, you know, negative thinking and negative judgment of ourselves and others and, you know, beat ourselves up or others up because maybe, you know, our systems are falling a little bit short because, you know, they're just not perfected yet. But I really think, you know, if we've been using this Pisces energy well the last couple of weeks or so, we should have some broader vision now. And, and now it's time to, you know, you know, get to work on that in this full moon cycle coming up. So, um, okay. And then a couple other things I wanted to mention this week on Saturday, Venus is squaring Uranus. Now remember a couple weeks ago, Mercury squared Uranus and then it conjuncted Saturn at the beginning of last week. And of course, Saturn and Uranus are in that square still, just like they were last year. So whenever one of the inner planets triggers one of them, like the whole square is getting triggered. And right now Uranus is a little bit lower in degrees than Saturn these days. They're a little bit, they're a little bit wide in their orb. And so the, the Uranus aspects are coming before the Saturn aspect. So this week we have Venus square Uranus on Saturday. And the conjunction, it'll eventually conjunct Saturn, but it's not, that's not going to be until towards the end of the month. So it'll be kind of like in that orb for a while. And, and the Venus square Uranus is interesting. It can bring a lot of stimulation and excitement to your life through relationships um, in a couple different ways. The first way is usually more of a way of that short-term relationships can come into your life and bring in something new that can be upsetting you know it can be you know you know if you're not flexible and someone who wants change a lot in your life you know it can be like you know like something that kind of throws your life upside down but if you're into like you know new stimulation new experiences with different people and stuff it can be bring a zap of excitement into your life and like i said it's usually short-term stuff now with older relationships it can be a little bit tougher like sometimes things can like um you know be you know get really like brutally honest is a good way with venus or uranus and things come up onto the floor and to be discussed and like so things get out in the open things get blown out in the open and like obviously change is occurring in the relationship and the question is at that point you know once those things are in the open can you hammer out you know an agreement where things continue or is it something that you know this is a line that you know i'm not able to cross with you and therefore the relationship becomes unstable or even separates as it may be so so it kind of runs the gamut and like you know like i said it really you know if you're into new energy coming in through other people if you're into like um you know bringing some change and excitement in your life usually it's not too tough it's you know when we're looking for stability in relationships this is where this one can be a little tough and also it can indicate and it is a square this time it can indicate quick gains or losses of money so with the square you know i'd be more apt to think that you know it could be a little bit challenging with money these days you know the stock market is showing signs of like really taking a hit in the current world climate so that's just an example socially um or collectively but like even on an individual level we might have some quick gains or losses with our finances or unexpected gains or losses or instability with our finances and it's just a period of time you know we'll just go through it and you know Venus will square set or conjunct Saturn later in the month which means we'll probably find some new ways of stabilizing these things and then also it can get us into art in different forms maybe um like just odd different kinds of art we may get into or we may even create different art than the normal thing that we do so you know it definitely is something like you know with the right attitude can bring a lot of fun and excitement into your life and it's on the weekend too so you know you might eat maybe just 
meet some interesting people on the weekend where if you go out socially or something and maybe not have much more of a connection with them, but they may bring you something important. And that may even fill back in some of the stuff going on with the full moon and the Mercury sextile Uranus, like this new information that stimulates you and wants you to get to work. And then the last thing I wanted to mention or is Sunday. There's a couple things Sunday. So that's the day of the the um, the spring equinox here in the in the uh, northern hemisphere and the fall equinox down in the southern hemisphere when the sun goes into Aries. So this is when the sun goes into the personal side of the zodiac for the next six months and people get more into what their journey and trip is. Like relationships have given us a lot of lessons in the last six months and now we're really inspired to do our thing. And that's the thing all about Aries. Aries, sun in Aries is, is exalted. The sun is really happy in Aries because it's doing its own thing. In fact, it can get disregarding even of others and relationships be insensitive to relationships be tactless in communication but, um so that's kind of the dangerous side of the sun and aries but it gives a great amount of energy a great amount of motivation and will to do to travel our life path and to go on some kind of adventure to take it to another level where you know where we're really reaching for something we want to do and and one of the difficulties with sun and aries is that and why it has to operate in a singularity type of level a lot of times is because it's difficult for other people to keep up with you because whatever you're personally interested in, you're going to put a lot of energy, a lot of zest into what that is. And, and, and so many times you'll find that it's best to, you know, work on your projects or whatever that personal interest thing is alone during the Aries time where you can get impatient, irritated, even angry with other people. Now, the interesting thing about Aries is it is very quick to get angry. It's hot tempered a lot of times, but it's also very quick to forgive and forget and just move on but it is the sign of the warrior you know the one that wants to protect and you know is gonna you know when it gets a little bit too selfish about that it can get really out on its own island and really disconnect socially with everyone else and kind of you know maybe almost be like a little bit of the, the hard guy to get along with but you know if we can channel that energy into like this warrior archetype that Aries is, this adventurer that Aries is, to reach for something greater in ourselves. And, you know, and that's, that can really motivate us to do some great, great things with Aries. And, and, and learn to, um, you know, um, be okay, too, with, like, our everyday experience also being part of, like, that archetype of, like, protecting you know, ours and what's ours and, and, um, seeing that as part of the adventure of life too, that it doesn't always have to be somewhere far off. So very interesting energy there. And then the last thing also on, on, um, Sunday, Mercury is conjuncting Jupiter in Pisces. So that's just super big ideas, you know, just a very broad vision a very like all encompassing tolerant viewpoint wanting to take in new knowledge new information new wisdom from all kinds of different places different cultures different people different background places that you're not used to and just seeing this very broad thing that gives a very optimistic maybe overly so mine, but it's great for planning the future. It's very future thinking and, you know, and that's, you know, really once again, a great time to vision things. Now, the thing that can trip us up with that one is overlooking details. So hopefully the Virgo moon, that won't happen during this moon cycle that, you know, can blend them together. But also thinking that you may have the answer for everyone. That's another danger of Mercury-Jupiter conjunction, like kind of becoming, you know, a little bit too uh, boisterous or loudmouth and pushy about what you believe in and what you think other people should do. Um, but great for like, you know, studying 
philosophical stuff, religious, mystical, spiritual stuff to any kind of higher knowledge that you want to take in, secondary education, things to do with the law can be worked on, really good for negotiating, things like that now. So really, once again, a really broad visioned, all encompassing, tolerant kind of energy where we can really blend that with, you know, the, the, the Pisces part of the the full moon energy and the Pisces energy that's kind of near the end now and um, you know really look at you know what our plan is for the future and you know trying to make it something great trying to bring in personal expansion and growth through what we're doing so very interesting week um, you know definitely a little bit of challenges here and there but I think for the most part another opportunity to really like bring in changes into our life in, in, in an easier way and really get them down, you know, our visions down into practical, real world, physical um, procedures that are gonna help us perfect our system so that we can move forward. All right, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel on YouTube every Monday. Become a follower, put your notifications on. If you have an account on all kinds of podcasts, look it up. On Instagram, look it up. Facebook, look me up, Matthew Lawton. Um, if you wanna give a donation, Zelle, PayPal, or, um, or Venmo, once again, Matthew Lawton, look that up. Um, also, um, please pass the blog on to anyone that um, you think be interested. It is a free service, and I'd really appreciate it if you can use your network to pay me back a little bit by um, passing it on to someone else that you think might be interested in it. And I appreciate that. And then readings. I gave readings. I've been doing them for 20 years professionally. Um, give me, drop me an email, M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. We'll talk prices and how we set everything up, all that kind of stuff. Do all kinds of readings, birth charts, uh, predictive reading for a year, which is similar to this weather report I just gave for this week, except for it's for you and your chart for the year. Uh, relationship charts, children's charts, elections if you're looking for the best timing at an event horary charts fixed stars readings for a deeper soul purpose so classes available there's five beginner classes once again just get in touch with me um, available for lectures and events to once again m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com all right until next week oh um sunday is that um the solstice so i'll probably look at the solstice chart at some point in the next week or so set for washington dc and do a little political blog on the next three months for what to expect in the u.s so look for that too it'll probably come up on a different day and another good reason to be a follower because you may miss stuff like that all right i will see you all next week astrological winds channel matt lawton signing off <laughs>